Hey brother! Jay, I really, really, really badly wanted this video to be called How Elsa Got Her Powers. But I can assure you that I have combed through this movie more times than Rapunzel has combed through her hair, which is more than a few times more than what would be considered embarrassing. But I've taken meticulous notes and put a giant board on my wall with all of the pictures and connected them all with red yarn. I don't, I don't know what the red yarn is for, but that's what they do in movies. Mine kind of looked like a snowflake. But Jay, after all of this research, I have come to a rock solid conclusion about Elsa's powers, and that is she has them. What makes less sense, however, is that her gloves can contain these powers even better than an entire kingdom. And why their dad knows where to go when she gets struck and why he has this book and why he knows that gloves will help contain the powers. Conceal it. Don't feel it. I really wish I had some yarn right now. I know, right? It totally seems like the dad just should have had powers or experience with powers or at the very least like a third cousin twice removed who hiccuped a snowflake once. So where did he come up with this concept to wear gloves to contain powers? Because it totally worked. And we can see on so many other occasions where the actual removal of the gloves almost instantaneously causes her powers to emerge. Like when she's practicing holding the orb in the scepter. And when she actually holds the orb in the scepter. And when Anna steals one of her gloves and she lashes out and power only comes from the one ungloved hand. And finally, she basically fully embraces her power by removing that other glove. So gloves, something to it. Kinda weird the dad knew. Except you know who also new possibly is Hans because later in the movie after Elsa is captured and in the cell she has a fancy pair of metal mittens. Aw, in case she gets cold. Wait, no. Cold doesn't bother her. Briefly forgot the entire premise of the movie. But speaking of Hans, he also wears gloves and this has less to do with concealment of powers and more just to do with concealment in general. Gloves are being used very carefully in this movie to kind of represent this idea. Elsa is wearing them to conceal her powers and Hans is wearing them to conceal his true motives. It's actually to the letter. If you watch carefully, the very first thing Hans does as he's revealing his true self to Anna is, wait for it. Yes, I knew I'd have to marry into the throne somewhere. Taking off his gloves, basically on cue. And then what does he do when he's about to leave and has to go back into character? And the hero who was going to- Gloves up! But back to Elsa and the metal mittens. While these work initially, she does break out of them pretty quickly. And probably the most likely explanation as to how isn't magical at all. It's more like how if you swallow gum, it doesn't sit in your stomach for seven years. And how there isn't really a farm that mom and dad sent Spot to. And if you keep making that funny face, it won't actually get stuck that way. The gloves never did anything anyway. But then why did they work so well for so many years? Basically because her parents told her they would. It's kind of like a combination between your parents saying that kissing a boo-boo makes it better and a teddy bear. This... <laughs> Isn't that different from this? Make one wrong move and everyone will know. The gloves are her teddy bear. You see, the reason why we so often see kids with a teddy bear or a blanket or, you know, gloves is because these objects are known as comfort objects. This is actually something in child psychology. It's meant to be a transitional object that kind of helps the child grow from total dependency on their parents to kind of intermediary dependency. And believe you me, they can be quite powerful. As kids, both Jay and I had a condition in our chest called pectus, where it was kind of caved in like a cereal bowl. At age 11, we both had surgery that was kind of like braces for your chest. It was literally a titanium metal bar that came across your chest plate to lift it to a more natural position. Check it out, we still have the scars. And I don't care what you've heard about Superman, but having a chest of steel hurts. It was a long two years. It really just would have been a good time to just not have bones. I don't have a skull or bones. 
I love Olaf. Long story short, after surgery, they gave us a hug me pillow. AKA a towel wrapped in medical tape with hug me written on it in Sharpie with a smiley face. Apparently there's a learning curve. Nailed it. The idea was if our chest hurt, we could basically just hug the pillow and it was supposed to make us feel better. And man, did it work. And not because of medical advancements that allowed for a mild painkiller to kind of be transferred to us upon squeezing it, but because our parents and doctors told us it would work, which was weird because hugs in general were basically off limits for two months, as was laughing and sneezing and breathing. And while that story is true, it is not exactly Disney or Frozen canon, so that kind of forces me back to Elsa and just how powerful the advice from someone you trust can be. If we go back to that scene where Elsa first lashes out, and you can notice that the powers are only coming from that ungloved hand, it's the belief that the gloves were working that was so powerful that even when she lost control, the functionless gloves were functioning. But the key here is also someone you trust. The advice coming directly from her father was absolutely paramount to this working. Once again, if we go back to that not orb, not scepter scene, we can see Elsa remove the gloves and she's able to hold on to the candlestick as long as she's looking up at her father doing the same. It's not until she actually turns around and loses that sense of security and has that feeling of being alone that she loses control. This ties in really nicely with what Grandpappy says. Fear will be your enemy. The common interpretation of this, and even kind of how they show it to you in the sky, is that the fear of your powers will turn people against you. Sorcery. But I don't think that's the only or even best interpretation of what he says. I think really what ultimately is the greatest challenge for Elsa is her own fear of her powers and how they could affect others. Because even when she's a kid, she has pretty good mastery of her power. She's able to create create huge pillars of snow, and it's not until after she accidentally hits Anna that she starts losing that control. And then again, after she flees Arendelle and is on top of the mountain completely by herself, she loses that fear and boom, ice castle. But after she's captured and Anna's life is in danger and that fear returns, it's an all out blizzard. Elsa's gloves work not because they hold any magical properties at all. What they hold is the trust and advice of her parents. There you go guys, that is why we believe Elsa's gloves work. For my question of the day, did you have a security blanket or just comfort object when you were a kid? Be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Frozen action from us, you can click right here to see our theory on how Hans is a mirror, or right here to see who performed the true act of love. But Jay, that is everything I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.